over 10 years ago, I had a very silly idea of what would it be like if you took a classic camper van and instead of an engine replacement, you did an electric motor replacement. Over 10 years later, and we've evolved to now be able to launch our exclusive next generation of electric conversion kit for classic camper vans. And here you have it. So for the first time, we are able to offer a single battery box with the highest capacity of batteries possible for the longest range possible. We are able to offer an incredibly compact and powerful motor that's still three times as powerful as your original engine. And the installation is even better. You can get all of this in and out of a classic camper van in around about an hour. Welcome to Edub Services. My name is Kit Lacey. Let's dive into what makes our latest electric conversion kit for classic campers so incredible. So one of the big changes that we've made since our previous um, electric conversion kit for classic camper vans is actually how simple it is, which causes a bit of confusion in terms of where do we start? Because it's kind of, there's only a few bits to go through. So I'm gonna go through all of them in detail, probably a bit too much detail, which is absolutely fine. So you can understand exactly what goes into an electric conversion and how it's gonna transform um, your particular camper van. So we'll start with the beefy end, which is the battery at this end here. Now we've arranged them how they fit into the vehicle. And you can see an example of that in the split screen behind me, but we'll have a look at that properly in just a second. The battery box itself, Inside here is 62 kilowatt hours of capacity in one single box. That is the maximum you can get in a classic camper van because of the weight of the rear axle. If you go any bigger than that, first of all, it won't fit, as you can see from how compact it is, but it also, it will overweigh the, back, the rear axle. You're gonna go over your weight limits. You're gonna have real trouble um, steering because it's gonna be so back heavy. Um, so yeah, 62 kilowatt hours is as big as you can go. And that gives you a real world range, real world range down to 10% of about 170, 180 miles. Personal experience, the vehicle's still a classic camper. That's absolutely fine. Driving that amount in one go is almost too much in a classic camper. It's fun but then you just stop and rapid charge in 45 minutes, no big deal. So not only does this battery box contain obviously batteries, but it contains all the other safety connections within there as well. So behind this access hatch on the very front, which is for us to be able to fit it and also for servicing, Inside there is a, a board covered in your high voltage contactors to keep the vehicle safe. So right now, even though this is a fully capable pack, these high voltage sockets are not live. Um, so the system is safe for shipping to international suppliers um, and also for the installation stages. So it doesn't go live for high voltage until the absolute last second. Um, inside there as well, you've got your battery management system. We use an Orion battery management system and we've tailor built uh, the profiles into there over the last decade of trialing Orion battery management systems to be perfectly suited to the batteries that are installed and also the ton of the safety parameters that Orion are really great at including in their systems. All of that is taking care of safety parameters within the box itself between the battery management system and the battery modules, but also coming out of the box to all the other things that we control in the vehicle. Uh, so we have uh, what we call our ECB, our EDUB control board, and that's effectively your modern, like a car would have a fuse and relay board. It's that equivalent that controls all of our electric systems. And those are all mostly controlled again by the battery management system, keeping everything safe. So if there is a problem or if the battery management system is not happy with the setup, it will stop things from operating and help you to diagnose what the problems are. Also on side here, we've got our smaller high voltage connections for accessories. In this particular build, it's um, quite minimal high voltage accessories. So you've got your charger, you've got your DC-DC converter, and you've got um, an off-grid um, inverter system so you can boil your kettle without being plugged in. Um, but you can also add heating and air conditioning as well to these kits. And it's a really simple add-on uh, that we add as a feature um, to our systems. We have our battery blow-off valve there as well. That's to help regulate the pressure inside the box because the box is a sealed box to keep any moisture out. Um, but as the batteries warm up and, and change, there's a little bit of movement within that box. So to avoid any seals popping, a battery blow-off will protect you on there. And then we've got our safety disconnect as well. This is mandatory for electric conversions where you have something that is physically removable that breaks the high voltage circuit. If the vehicle was involved in an incident, then that is the first thing that fire crews and emergency services are gonna be able to go through. So we make it massively accessible right 
on the back of the box. Let me show you what it looks like in the vehicle, because this is the only bit you can see. So this is our split screen conversion. This is now up and running and ready to go. As you can see, it's all pretty tidy. So you've got your access panel here. Now with this particular conversion, the split screens and the early bays, the entire rear bumper section is removed. So you can access all of this without having to remove it from the vehicle. Crossovers and later bays up to 1979 have this as a solid piece. Um, so although we can remove the access hatch from those particular conversions, um, you do have to kind of get it all assembled and then raise it up under the vehicle before it goes in. But as you can see here, everything is all nice and snug. All your high voltage connections are even further protected underneath the bumper here. So if there was anybody traveling a bit too close behind you um, and causes a bit of an impact here, you're being protected by the bumper and that's protecting a lot of the actual high voltage connections as well. We also integrate that isn't on the floor here, but you've got your cooling system on the left there. That's with specific um, mounts to hold the radiators, the header tanks, and the pumps on the cooling system on the left hand side there. And then what I mentioned before, our e -dub control board that sits where the original 12 volt battery used to go. Yes, electric vehicles still need a 12 volt battery. It doesn't need to be as big as it used to be because it's not trying to crank and start an engine, but it does still need to be there to turn on certain systems like our battery management systems and allow the first systems to turn on before we have the DC-DC converters that take over those systems, which leads me nicely onto the next section here. So this shelf here, I'm gonna shimmy in between for a moment. This is what goes on the petrol tank shelf. If you're familiar with camper vans, they have the main engine bay, they have the gearbox that normally sits between the rear wheels. And then on top of that is the petrol tank shelf where the petrol tank used to go. That's why we call it the petrol tank shelf. We now fit a lot of our other items on here. So specifically, we have our motor inverter that has to sit there as well. So that's just taking the DC power from the battery pack, turning it into AC power and sending it into the motor. We have our charger and we have our DC-DC converter. And as I said before, this particular system has got an inverter as well. So you can do off-grid camping. But the DC-DC systems here is effectively your alternator. A lot of people query what those are for, but they're obviously essential because when you're driving for a long distance or when you're charging, you don't want your 12 volt systems to go dead and to switch off because they are the safety parameters making sure everything's okay. So what your DC-DC converters do is they turn up the power and allow you to take the high voltage power from your battery pack and just like an alternator, turn them into low voltage power for your 12 volt starter battery. And again, we've built this on a really clever kind of pack and rail system. So we have a base plate that fits into the petrol tank shelf and fixes on to where the petrol tank shelf used to be. And then we have all the different components because these are quite various of what actually fits on top of that plate. So whether it's this particular inverter or we have a different motor that we're now using for some of our conversions, which is slightly different shape and different mounting points, maybe the charger. So this is a fourth generation charger. When a fifth generation charger comes out, we just have to change the mounting points. We don't have to change anything else. There's also different chargers that we can get hold of. These particular ones are air cooled. You can get liquid cooled chargers. So if we're doing a conversion for a client in hotter climates that really needs more liquid cooling, then we can change the mountings for all of that as well. But it means that this can all be assembled really nicely. We can also plan all the wiring looms into that and it gets installed and tucked away and forgotten about until probably the next time it gets a complete revamp. There's no reason to touch any of that all over again. Finally, we'll talk about this particular system here. Now, we'll get onto the motor in just a moment. This here is really crucial. So one of the big things that's an issue with electric conversions is how much of the vehicle you're altering when you're installing certain components. You can't cut the chassis, you can't weld to the chassis, and you can't bolt or drill into the chassis either. So what we elected to do is we've taken this tubular frame system that's been engineered and designed to effectively add an extra chassis to where the mounting points already are. So picture that this end here is the back of the vehicle and at the front end here is where the gearbox used to mount. So originally this was your gearbox space and this was your engine space. And we pick up off the mounting points that were there originally. So we're not adding any extra holes. And that means the whole thing is really easy to install. So I can, one person can get all of this out of the vehicle in less than an hour. That's incredible. From a functioning vehicle, so that's disconnecting everything, that's undoing the bolts that need it, and it drops the whole thing out underneath. So from an installation perspective, for our international partners who are looking to supply these to their clients in different countries, it makes it an absolute breeze to be installing and, and, and disassembling as well. 
But then we built this system to be obviously as strong as possible. And then the battery box itself raises up inside these rails. So you install this system first with the motor on itself. So that rolls under the vehicle and bolts on. That creates your second chassis that we can then attach our battery pack onto that keeps the rigidity and the strength. It does add a bit more weight. So this particular variety is our biggest battery pack, as we said. So it adds maybe between 100 and 150 kilos. So it's the equivalent of having two passengers on your back seat. Um, it doesn't take you anywhere near the payload of the vehicle at all. So as the split screen, for example, um, it was originally around, I think, 1.2 1 uh, tons. Um, it takes it up to about 1.5 with the entire electric conversion, which still gives you 500 kilos of carrying weight, which is more than enough space to bring a few um, visitors with you and luggage and things like that. So we don't go anywhere near the payloads of those. Obviously, the later campers, so the bay window campers, have got even higher payloads, which again means you've got even more space to be carrying stuff. So the motor itself. Now in this particular variety, this is a Zonic motor um, that we've installed and we've tested. Zonics um, are slightly underpowered, or they're, they're well powered for what it needs. So it's 70 kilowatts, which is um, about 90 brake horsepower, which is still double, arguably, maybe triple, the power that the original engine used to have. So it's absolutely fine. Um, but we also have other varieties of motors um, that we now supply with these as well, that are uh, slightly more powerful. So they're 120 brake horsepower. But for the purposes of this video, the more powerful motor is in the split screen at the moment, um, and this is the motor that we have in front of us. So as you can see, it's a, it's a standard high voltage motor. That's this part here. That's taking your power from your inverter. So it's going DC power from your batteries into the inverter, switching it to AC, coming around into your motor. That's then spinning into the transaxle gearbox here, through the reducer, and out to the drive shafts on each end. And again, we've tried to keep the drive shafts they have to be custom made because they're different lengths, but your CVs on the outside and your wheels all are identical. None of that needs to change. Um, and again, depending on your vehicle, you might not need to change anything else in the vehicle either, even though you're adding more power. Because of how we are delivering that power, it makes it more responsive and more capable, but it doesn't tear the vehicle apart. But the beauty of these motors, as you've seen here, if you've seen our previous video with the Tesla motors, they were quite a bit bigger than this, and they had to sit further forwards in the vehicle to actually fit between the, um, the rear uh, system. Whereas this motor is much, much smaller, and we'll be able to tuck it right under the vehicle where the gearbox used to be, which has allowed us to get one single box with all of the height in. So the, the actual linchpin of what's enabled us to switch from the Tesla systems to these systems, bearing in mind these are brand new, so Tesla systems are, are not brand new, so there's limited warranties we can put on those. These are brand new units, so they have much more protection over aftercare and serviceability as well. But this is the linchpin. So without something like this, we weren't able to develop a single battery box. Everything had to be in multiple battery boxes throughout the vehicle to fit it all in. So this has been an absolute game changer for what we've been able to achieve. Alongside all of these, if you are uh, looking to become an international supplier for EDUB conversions, you would also be supplied with all the other smaller components like your dash, your CCS charging port, and all of your wiring looms as well. All of those get supplied to you pre-built and pre-made to assemble into the vehicle as they go. So we already build all of our systems here in-house to enable our installations to be as swift and efficient as possible that then gets given to you under license to be able to do it yourself within um, other countries to facilitate to other people so if you're looking to um, purchase these kits uh, as a minimum quantity um, then we can look to get you approved on our systems and license you with the installation guides and train you on how to install them and how to service them please get in touch uh, tell us about what your facilities are um, and what you think the demand is going to be in your location um, and then we can look to take you through the process of getting more electric conversion systems into more classic campus so we can keep more of them on the road. So let's say you're convinced by our classic campfan electric conversion systems, you are going to be one of two types of person. You are either going to be an individual who either has a classic camper van from 1950 split screen right the way through to a Lake Bay 1979. This system will fit any of those campers really simply. So that's what the vehicle has to be. If you have another vehicle that you want us to convert, get in touch, but that's not what this video is about. If you have another vehicle that's slightly outside of those realms, like a T25, T3, get in touch. 
not exactly what this video is about. We can do it, but we'll go through that in a, a separate email. This particular vehicle, you, you might have a vehicle that you want to deliver to us. Again, get in touch because this system is just available to order, to schedule into our fitting program with our staff and our facility here in North Yorkshire in the UK, and we can get you scheduled up for the installation into your vehicle. If you need help finding a classic camper again, get in touch because we have links to be able to source you the perfect camper and we can even kit it out to exactly how you need it to be. Maybe you're a trade customer. Maybe you are looking at this as an investment opportunity to get into the electric conversion market and you think partnering with EDUB is the way to go. So then again, please get in touch. We are looking at um, expanding our facility now that the hard work has been done for the R&D to create the systems. Let's get more of these systems into more um, electric camper vans uh, around the world. So if you're a trade customer and you're looking at ordering multiple kits of this to be able to offer to your customers or other clients within your area, then again, please get in touch uh, through the website, which is edubconversions.co.uk, or you can drop us an email. My personal email is kit at edubservices.co.uk. Please let us know what makes you the perfect partner to be able to bring these campers to more people around the globe. Thank you again so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, why not like the video and subscribe to get notifications of how these videos land in your inbox. And also maybe share it with somebody that you know, share it on socials, share it with other people within your network uh, and tell them all about the work that we're doing here to keep more of these classic campers on the road. Thanks again for watching. My name's been Kit Lacey and we will see you again next time.